Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Dalton Howard, interning for Red Mortimer. It's been a rainy, stormy day, and not much is looking better for the rest of the night, with some flash flooding even possible. Things are looking up for the rest of the week though, and next week the weather's actually looking pretty nice. As far as headlines go today though, we have quite a few things to discuss, including the painful mayor, Bob Porter, re requesting a change of venue for his trial, a dean from UPAC's Coll College of Medicine being installed as the new American Osteopathic Association's president, a county coroner warning of tainted heroin on social media, and also a popular Ashland cardiologist standing trial for Medicare fraud. To start out though, we're going to discuss the sentencing of a former Paintsville Utilities Manager. Former Paintsville Utilities Manager, manager Larry Harold has been sentenced in federal court for lying to the FBI. The sentence was part of a plea deal Harold reached earlier this year after pleading guilty to lying to the FBI in a phone interview where he denied any knowledge of Mayor Bob Porter receiving free utilities for more than two years at several properties owned by the mayor. In this agreement, two charges of aiding and abetting each other in misappropriating at least $5,000 from the Paintsville Utilities were dropped against Harold. For lying to the FBI, Harold was sentenced to two years probation, two months home incarceration, and ordered to pay a fine of $5,000. In a related matter, Paintsville Mayor Bob Porter's request for a change of venue for his trial has been granted. Citing that the jury pool in Pikeville is too biased to support a fair trial, the trial has now been set for September the 21st at the Federal Courthouse in London. United States District Judge Danny Reeve agreed to the change of venue and a new trial date at the request of Porter's attorney, who requested the change after learning a member of the jury who has appeared on other jury panels will be a material witness in the government's case in chief against Porter. Meanwhile, a co-defendant, Euless Crace, has severed ties in the case with Porter and has filed to be tried separately. Crace has since been incarcerated in a federal medical center in Lexington where he will undergo a competency assessment. At this time, there is no indication when that assessment will be completed. Boyd R. Boozer, D.O., Dean of the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine, was installed Saturday as president of the American Osteopathic Association. Boozer assumed the presidency before an estimated 500 osteopathic physicians, or D.O.s, at the American Osteopathic Association's annual business meeting in Chicago. The organization represents the professional interests of the nation's more than 123,000 DOs and osteopathic medical students. A, a fellow of the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians, Boozer is past president of the American Academy of Osteopathy. He currently serves as the vice president for health affairs and dean at the University of Pikeville Kentucky College of Medicine, where he is also a professor of family medicine as well as osteopathic principles and practice. During his career, Boozer held numerous positions within the association and is best known for helping shepherd the profession through the transition to a single graduate medical education accreditation system. In other news, the Boyd County Coroner's Office has taken to social media in an effort to help prevent the rise in overdoses related to tainted heroin. While some question going to Facebook to warn drug users of potential contamination, Coroner Mark Hammond said the postings have helped save lives. When the tainted heroin hit the streets of Ashland, there were 10 overdoses in a 14-hour period, where normally there are two in 24 hours. Of those 10, one died. The Facebook site quickly caught on and was shared more than 750 times. Hammond says the alerts they are able to make through Facebook warn users to uh, tainted heroin, which otherwise would be undetected. Hammond also said that many don't fear overdosing because their assumption that the drug naloxone can be used by emergency personnel and can save them from dying. What they don't understand though is that the drug cannot always be am administered immediately and using laced heroin makes the drug less effective. Corner Hammond plans to continue the Facebook postings and also expects to add a Twitter account in the near future. A popular cardiologist at King's Daughters Hospital in Ashland will stand trial in September in federal court in Covington. Dr. Richard Paulus is accused of performing unnecessary cardiac stent procedures over a five-year period in an effort to defraud Medicare, Medicaid, and other insurers. The trial, which has been moved to Covington, is set for September after being moved from Ashland Federal, U.S. Federal Court because of concerns of being able to find an impartial jury for the highly popular physician. Also cited for the move was numerous jurors who could be connected with King Daughters Medical Center and the likelihood of a tainted jury pool due to local news coverage. 
During a five-year period, Dr. Paulus is said to have performed more stent placements than any other cardiologist in Kentucky. The stent procedures involve installing a small mesh tube in a blood vessel to keep it open, a procedure that Paulus is accused of doing on patients with no medical need and billing for those services. The trial could last three months. And now it's time for our community calendar, brought to you by Doug Green and the Kentucky Farm Bureau. Are you or someone you care for dealing with an ongoing health condition such as diabetes, arthritis, high blood pressure, heart disease, chronic pain, or cancer? The Take Charge Workshop can help you take charge of your health. It's a free two and a half hour workshop once a week for six weeks. You'll learn from trained volunteer leaders, set goals, make a step-by-step -step plan to improve your health, learn to manage pain, increase your fitness, and more. It'll take place on Thursdays from August 4th till September 8th from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Registration is required, so call Judy Bailey at 606-349-8842 if you're interested. Here's an excellent opportunity this weekend if you need shoes for the upcoming school year. Operation School Shoes is going to take place on Saturday, July 30th at the McGoffin County Middle School starting at 9 a.m. They're giving out 476 pairs of new name brand shoes to students who need them. Prayer in the Park is just days away. On August 4th, the non-denominational community prayer gathering will be held at Ramey Park from 6 to 8 p.m. City officials, school faculty, pastors, leaders, public servants, and all community members are encouraged to attend. Please, jo please join them for their time of prayer. There's a missing dog in the Evanston area of Route 542. It's a yellow and white male lab mix wearing a green collar and it goes by the name of Lucky. If you have any information uh, on where they could find the dog, call 606-884-8409. They would love to have their pet back. If you've got any birthdays, anniversaries, or anything else you'd like to put on the community calendar, you can always contact us at P.O. Box 1443, Your News Today at Yahoo.com, Facebook at Ritter Mortimer, at the phone numbers listed, and of course at YourNewsToday.com. And now time for a more detailed look at the weather for the rest of the week. As for the weather tonight, you can expect occasional showers and thunderstorms mainly before midnight. Some of the storms could produce heavy rainfall. Area of fog, er, there will be areas of fog after 2 a.m. Lows around 67. Chance of precipitation is 80% and new rainfall amounts are expected to be between a half and three quarters of an inch. So flash flooding is possible. Please watch out for that and be safe tonight. As for tomorrow, things are looking up a bit. There are going to be shattered, scattered showers and thunderstorms, not nearly to the level that we have today, though. Uh, areas of fog after 10 a.m. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a high near 83. Chance of precipitation is 40%. As for tomorrow night, still same thing, scattered showers and thunderstorms. You can expect patchy fog after 11 p.m. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a low around 68. Chance, chance of precipitation then is 30%. As for Saturday, there's a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms and areas of fogs before 8 a.m. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a high near 83. As for Saturday night, there's a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. It's going to be mostly cloudy with a high or a low around 67. As for Sunday, though, things really start to look up. On Sunday, you can expect a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly before 2 p.m. You can expect to be partly sunny with a high near 83, so things are clearing up a bit by then. As for Sunday night, there's a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 9 p.m. It's going to be mostly cloudy with a low around 66. As for Monday, things are looking great. It's going to be mostly sunny with a high near 83, so it's going to be a nice break from this rain. Monday night, it's going to be partly cloudy with a low around 65. And for Tuesday, you can expect it to be mostly sunny with a high near 86, so things are still looking up then. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, because we have plenty of news discussing the new high school opening, including a ribbon-cutting ceremony and a possible tour. Thank you for tuning in today.